I attempted an Omega Ruby Hardcore Nuzlocke using Shiny Pokemon only. Not only has this challenge been insanely hard, but also the scariest challenge I've ever done. This is by far the hardest challenge I've ever done, so make sure to support the video by hitting the like and subscribing. I'm playing this challenge with full odds, so 1 in 8192. I'm not allowing the use of Dex Navi either. This means that I'm gonna have to spend hours planning every single battle, because if any of my Pokemon get knocked out, I'll have to spend ages recovering the loss. Make sure to watch the video to the end, because we went through some seriously tough fights later on. You guys know the rules by now, but here goes. All fainted Pokemon must be permaboxed. There's no leveling past the gym leader's ace, and for the elite four, the cap will be 55. In-game items are also not allowed. Mega evolutions are banned, and I must catch the first shiny encounter on each route, and finally, dupes claws. I'll have more on these rules in the description down below. Thank you so much, let's get into the video. I start off by shiny hunting our starter, and I chose to go with Mudkip. This is my least favorite part of shiny hunting, as I can't explore or take a break to look for items, but it sure will be satisfying when I finally catch it. After around 8 hours of soft resetting, I finally end up finding this beautiful purple Mudkip who I call Lavender. I tried to create a double meaning name theme here, so can you guess the name theme I chose and why I chose it? His nature is timid, which I'm indifferent about. The speed boost is nice, but I don't like that I have to sacrifice attack for it. I wouldn't normally show the first rival battle, but we have to take a look at Lavender in battle. As you can see, I didn't make sure to do a lot of leveling against Trico to take no risks. Lavender does absolutely sweep though, and there goes Mei. I make sure to fully stack up on Pokeballs here, because when I hunt for the next shiny I want to be fully prepared. I don't want to get into any risky situations at the start, so I make sure to look for my next team member right off the bat. After around 6 hours of searching, I finally find a shiny Puchiana. After a couple of Pokeballs, we finally catch her and name her Saffron. Her nature is Impish, which is amazing due to Saffron being a physical attacker. I make sure to fully train up my team and then take on the first gym leader, Roxanne. Lavender's typing is perfect for this, so I'm not too worried. I send out Lavender while she goes with Geodude. One hit doesn't kill due to Sturdy, but the next Water Gun is more than enough to take her down. Next up is her Nose Pass, so I keep on going with Water Gun. It should be able to tank a crit here too, so I go with the Water Gun. She hits me hard first, but an Orenberry brings Lavender back up to full health. This allows for me to finish the battle off on the next turn. Even this battle was really scary because I'm so attached to my team. I can't just stop here though, so let's keep on going. After taking on this Team Magma Grunt at the Granite Cave, I make my way to Duford Town on this beautiful nighttime cruise where I face the second gym challenge. While there, Lavender evolves into this distorted pink panther who I use to catch my next encounter, Makuhira. I was looking for a Zubat here to help me easily take down the second gym, but I'm definitely not complaining. I forgot to record the battle here, but after another around 6 hours, I catch him and name him Vermilion, whose nature is calm. This is absolutely horrible as it lowers his attack which is one of his selling points. I level him up and make sure my entire team is ready. I make sure to closely monitor my pulse and not have a heart attack here, and then I take on Brawly. His team of fighting type should be pretty manageable, but that doesn't calm me down one bit. I lead with Vermilion against matchup. I start off with a Fake Out to secure some good chip damage, and I then load up these red boxing gloves and hit him with a Force Pump. The next one takes him down, but not before lowering Vermilion's defense. Next up is Vermilion's more bland cousin. I start off with a Force Pump here which ends up being a crit and also paralyzes him. Vermilion's Orenberry does get knocked off though, which is not ideal. After Broly heals him up, the next Force Palm still has over half his health and leaves us in a great spot. One more Force Palm is enough to take the win here, and every single win feels like such a relief. Let's keep it up. On the way to Marvel's City, I train up Saffron, who ends up evolving into a Golden Mightyena. Right before making it into Marvel City, I run into Mei and take on my first proper rival battle. Lavender's typing is perfect, so I start with him. I go for a water gun against her slugma, which does big damage. The second one is easily enough to score the win. Mason's out Groval next, so due to my 4 times weakness to grass, I switch to Saffron. Groval's attacks really don't hurt Saffron here, so I feel relatively safe. Even just a bite does over half of her health, and the second one is easily enough for the finisher. It's not over yet though, as next up is Whalemer. She is a bit tankier, so 2 bites aren't enough to score the KO. Saffron finally gets the finisher, and there goes Mei. I now finally make my way to Marvel City, where I take on my other rival, Wally. Although his all-powerful Ralts is extremely dangerous, we somehow managed to take him out with Vermilion. There's not much left to do here, apart from to take on Watson. Lavender's typing is perfect here, as his ground typing provides immunity against electricity. It also allows for super effective stab ground moves, which should be all I need for this gym. 
Let's give it a shot. Magnemite only survives the first mud shot due to its sturdy. I then lower his health with a water gun to get rid of sturdy and then KO Magnemite. Magneton doesn't stand any more of a chance here either, as a crit mud shot takes it out. I mean, it would have gone down to one shot anyways, but I am not complaining. Voltorb does manage to hit a rollout, but goes down to one hit too. Good work team, we're doing great here. After this, we acquire an absolute tank in the form of Hariyama. He sports these massive purple gloves like a champ. I run into Mei and Team Magma in the Meteor Falls, where we take on these Team Magma members in a double battle. I go for a fake out against my Tiana, after which Coughing self-destructs. I'm not looking to take any risks here, so I switch out to Lavender the second I can. Mei's Slugma goes down too, but luckily we're still safe. Groval does then take out my Tiana with a single hit, and with some teamwork we manage to take out Namel too. I get on the cable car and make my way to the top of Mount Chimney. Such a beautiful cutscene, I have to admit. These pooches don't want to let me go through, so I keep scaling the mountain. I wonder what's with these guys' obsessions with Poochianas. How weird. I then initiate battle against Tabitha. I didn't realize Vermilion was poisoned and damaged here, so I really get freaked out. I go for a fake out and switch out into Lavender right away. This ends up being perfect as Coughing self-destructs, which could have been deadly against Vermilion. Last up is Namel, but he stands no chance against a 4x effective water gun. I then have a huge battle against Maxi. I do remember to heal up Vermilion this time, so I decide to lead with him. His typing is perfect against my Tiana, so after hitting him with a fake out, Force Palm nearly takes him out. It does paralyze him though, which is amazing. Aurora then pulls in Saffron, and we have a battle of the my Tianas. Saffron sparkles easily outshine my Tiana, and she takes him out with a single bite. Maxi sends out camera up next, so I decide to switch out into Lavender. Water Gun's 4 times effectiveness isn't enough here, but Lavender barely manages to survive, living on just 4 health. The next shot does finish him off, but that was way too close for comfort. Last up is Golbat, and as you can guess, I switch out to Saffron right away. He manages to hit a Confuse Ray, but Saffron still pulls off a bite. Golbat doesn't do too much damage here, but I do hit myself in Confusion. After an Orenberry saves me here, I switch out to Vermilion. Even super effective air cutters barely scratch him, so I go for a fake out and finish the battle off here. If you thought this was intense, make sure to watch till the end of the video, because this was nothing compared to what's about to come later. I finally end up making my way to Flannery's gym, and her bright red hair most certainly matches her anger issues. We have quite an advantage here with typing, so this gym challenge should be doable. I lead with Lavender here due to his typing. I start off with a mud shot, but miss right away. The second one does hit though, and takes her out with a single shot. Namal is sent out next, and somehow she manages to tank a water gun. She's not able to do too much though, as the next hit finishes her off. You're doing great, Lavender. Torkoal's typing should let him down here, but somehow he manages to easily tank a water gun. Mudshot however does a lot more damage, and leaves him with low health. I go for a water gun here due to its 100% accuracy, and manage to finish her off. Bye bye Torkoal. And there we go, we just got our fourth gym badge. Let's keep on going. I do some running around in the desert in Route 111 due to its insane encounters. There's some super cool Pokemon such as Sandshrew, Trapinch, Baltoy, and Cacnea that I could find, so I decide to shiny hunt here next. After only around 4 hours, I end up finding a shiny Trapinch who I call Cerulean, which is insanely cool, and I can't wait to have a shiny Flygon in my team. The only issue here is that Trapinch evolves at a very high level, so she won't be much of a use for me now. After some intense research, I realized I did not want to take a risk against my dad's two slackings, so I head out and find yet another encounter, an Electrike. I wasn't as lucky with this one as it took me over 9 hours just to find him. I end up naming him Pewter, and after training him for just a bit, he evolves into a shiny Manectric. I gotta say this team looks absolutely amazing. I finally feel comfortable enough to take on my dad, Norman. The battle is gonna be deadly, as these slackings can easily wipe an entire team out in just a couple of hits. I really need to pay attention to this right here. He leads with slacking, and I go with pewter. I start off by going for a discharge while he goes for yawn. I don't end up switching out here, as I'm holding a chest stowberry, so I take him out with another discharge, and then wake up instantly. I keep on going with discharge against Vigoroth, even though one hit isn't enough for the KO, his encore isn't very effective, as I was planning on continuing with discharge anyways. Here comes Norman's final slacking, let's see what I can do. I go with a discharge once more, and then get hit by Swagger. 
As he has to recharge on the next turn, I take this chance to switch into Vermilion. I go with a Fake Out here, which triggers his Truant ability again, and then I go for a Force Palm, which leaves him with just a sliver of health. The next one takes him down, and we somehow beat yet another gym challenge with no casualties. After me and Steven go for our weekly nature adventure, we run into Eladios, who takes us into this mystical island. After destroying Team Magma, Ladios ends up joining our team, but as he isn't a shiny, into the box he goes. I take on Tabitha at the Weather Institute, but now that I have Surf, I shouldn't have much trouble with him in the future. Shortly after leaving the Weather Institute, I run into Mei and take on her new and improved team. I lead with Lavender and take out Slugma in a single Surf. I switch up to Vermilion against Grovile and start off with a Fake Out. Grovile's hits really don't do much here and I take her out with the next Force Palm. Even Whalemer stands no chance here, as two hits easily finish him off. Nice try, Mei. Shortly after this, Cerulean evolves into a Vibrava. He's getting closer and closer to that flag on every single level, and I'm super hyped to use him. Next up, I take on the 6th gym. Winona is a flying type user, so I naturally start off by using Pewter. His typing is perfect here, as even just one discharge takes out Winona's Swallow. Altaria is pretty good at tanking discharges here, and actually survives the first hit. I gave Pewter a Shaka Berry to help him with Altaria's Earthquake, and he barely takes any damage due to it. The next discharge lands the KO. Well done, Pewter. Winona's Pelipper is out next, so I once again go for Discharge. It's an easy one hit here, as she stands no chance to a quite effective hit. And last, but not least, is her Skarmory. Even this Metal Beast goes down to a single hit, and we just got our 6th Gym Badge. Not bad. Lavender then finally evolves into his final form, Swampert, and what a massive evolution that is. I run into Mei in Lilicob City and decide to take her on for the very last time. I lead with Pewter, and just like the last Swallow, this one goes down to a single hit too. Waylord is insanely bulky, but even she can't resist one discharge. Mei's Slugma has finally evolved into a Mag Cargo, but I guess that really doesn't make a difference here, as she yet again goes down to a single hit. As usual, now that Mei sent out Sceptile, I decide to switch out into Pewter here. I go for a discharge against Sceptile, and it's once again not looking good for her, as she gets paralyzed too. Sceptile really hasn't been able to do much throughout this playthrough, but I am definitely not complaining. And there goes Mei. I'm gonna miss battling her, but that just means there's one less chance for one of our teammates to get knocked out. I stumble upon this luxurious magma hideout, but before we're able to take it on, I make my way to the majestic Mount Pyre, where I once again destroy a Magma Leader. I take out yet another Camerapt in one hit, and it's not even fun at this point. I do obtain a blue orb though, so let's see what I can do with it. Team Magma then steals a submarine from Slateport City. I think I'm addicted to wiping out Camerapts at this point, so I make my way back to the Magma Hideout, where I manage to satisfy my cravings. Shortly after this, Cerulean finally evolves into a Flygon, who I'm really excited to start using. I then head to the 7th gym, where I take on Tate and Lisa. This is actually the gym I'm least worried about, as they only have one Pokemon each, but that doesn't mean I came any less prepared. They have a Lunatone and a Solrock, so I go for Vermilion and Lavender. I go for a Fake Out against Solrock, and then use a Surf on Lavender. This works out amazingly, as Surf is super effective against both opponents, but does barely any damage against Vermilion. I go for another Surf with Lavender, and this is nearly enough to end the battle, but it does end as Vermilion secures the KO with Wake Up Sup. We've made it super far guys, let's keep on going, only one gym left to go. I now decide to look for my final encounter, who after around 7 hours ends up being a shiny Nummel. I eventually catch him and name him Cinnabar. He has the ability Simple, which is amazing as it doubles all stat boosts. I can't wait to try and sweep with him. He evolves nearly right after this, and look at how sick this camera up looks. Not bad at all, am I right? After some exploring, I make my way to the seafloor cavern where I take on Maxi for the very last time. This should be doable, but his Mega Camerupt is extremely scary. He leads with my Tiana while I go for Pewter. One discharge is almost enough for the KO, which is insane as it isn't even super effective. I take him out with a strength right after. Next up, Maxi sends a Weezing, so I decide to go with Discharge. This is almost a one hit, and he doesn't manage to do any damage back either. And down he goes too. I'm especially not worried about Crobat here, as he's the easiest KO yet. Now for what I'm worried about, Mega Camerupt. This guy's special attack stat is insane at 145, so I really don't want to mess around here. I decide to switch out to Cerulean here. He also starts setting up by going for a Yawn, which is not amazing for a Cerulean. 
Earthquake luckily still does insane damage and somehow manages to be a one hit. You did amazing, Cerulean. Not bad for one of your first battles. After this battle, Groudon bounces up to the surface and starts surfing on some kind of magma infused skateboard. Now that's what I call impressive. I meet up with Steven in Sutopolis City and he takes me to a meeting with both Archie and Maxi and they decide to send me swimming into literal magma. There should be some sort of child protective services available here, right? There's no way this is legal. Anyways, I make my way to the bottom floor where I jump onto this beast's back and take a ride through this massive magma ocean. I then decide to take on Primal Groudon in a Pokemon battle. I set up with Amnesia here to boost my special defense insanely due to Cinnabar Simple. I then go for an Earth Power which somehow nearly finishes Groudon off in one shot. After a couple more Earth Powers, we somehow take out even Groudon with no losses. Not bad at all team, not bad at all. I then do some last minute training, and then finally decide to take on the 8th and last gym leader, Wallace. He leaves with Love Disc, so I send out Pewter. I go with a Discharge to start off, and it ends up being an easy KO. Whiskash could be deadly here due to his typing, so I have to switch out to Lavender. The first Earthquake doesn't KO, but I go for a Surf after, and it's easily enough to score the win. Next up is his B Floored Milotic. I decide to go for a Mudshot here to deal some serious damage, but also to slow her down. She recovers for some reason, which I'm completely fine with. I start off with a crunch, and due to my Orin Berry, I feel strong enough to tank yet another shot. It's literally just enough, as I'm left with just 10 HP. I then switch out to Pewter, as my Lodic fully recovers. I decide to go for a Discharge, and after tanking a Hydro Pump, my Lodic goes down right after. Now that Celio's next, I keep up on the same rhythm and score the one hit here too. Seeking obviously can't handle it either, and just like that, we get our very last gym badge. Nothing left but Steven left to go. Let's see how this goes. I scale this massive waterfall and make my way to the victory road where I decide to hunt for one last shiny Pokemon. There's some pretty cool ones here too, such as a lay run, but I'm definitely not complaining about this shiny Loudred either. I paralyze him and then get a crit which literally leaves him at like 1 health. My heart nearly jumped out of my chest here as I saw how close that was. I could have lost another 8 hours of hunting here, but luckily it didn't come to that. I catch her and I name her Fuchsia. I then make my way through the victory road where I decide to take on Wally's final team for the very first and last time. I go with Cinnabar here while he leads with Altaria. I decide to utilize Simple here and I start off with Amnesia. I repeat this which already maxes out Cinnabar's special defense. I then start setting up with Curse. I do this 3 times until my attack and defense are fully maxed out too and then I start taking down Altaria. One Lava Plume isn't enough to get the KO, but as Cinnabar is so bulked up right now, Altaria really can't hurt him. He eventually goes down to a Lava Plume. Roselia sets up with Leech Sheet, but gets taken out in one hit. Magneton stands absolutely no chance against a fully attack maxed Earthquake, but its sturdy does let it live. It does go down eventually though. Delcari goes for a faint attack, but it doesn't affect us too much as she goes down to a single hit. Now with Gallade up next, I'm too scared to risk it, so I switch out to Mariana. I resist his psychic move and then switch out to Lavender while he sets up with Swords Dance. He goes for it again and this is not good for me. Surf does end up dealing good damage, but the second one manages to get the KO. Not without being left at just 12 HP though. That was way too close for comfort guys, but there's no more fooling around anymore. The time has come to challenge the Pokemon League with my precious team of shinies. I take this long walk to the Pokemon League, but before taking the final leap, I decide to train up Fuchsia and evolve her into an Exploit. She's an absolute beast, and I feel like she'll definitely be a key player in the Elite Four. There's not really anything left to do but to go for it. Here we go guys, please wish me luck. I make my way to Sydney's dojo in the Pokemon League, and I decide to go with Vermilion due to his typing advantage. I gave him a white herb to counter Mighty and his Intimidate. Let's see how this goes. I start off by going with a Wake Up Slap, which ends up being an easy one hit KO Mighty Anna. Next up, Cindy sends out Shiftry. He starts off with a fake out, but that's about all the damage he'll do, as Shiftry also falls to just a single hit. Next up is Absol, who gets a crit with his super effective Psycho Cut, which really hits hard. It doesn't end up being too much of an issue though, as Wake Up Slap ends him in a single shot. Even Sharpedo falls to a single hit, but his rough skin leaves Vermillion at just 30 HP. I should outspeed Cacturn here, so one hit easily finishes him off too, and there goes the battle. Not bad for our first battle, let's keep on moving. I make my way to the second dojo, which is run by the ghost type leader, Phoebe. 
Her team is pretty decent, and Curse is deadly, but I did come prepared with a lot of dark type moves, so let's see what I can do. Vermilion hits a knockoff against Dusclops, which does major damage. Even though he does get confused and hits himself in confusion right after, it's not enough to stop him as the next knockoff easily finishes him off. Bennett is sent out next, so I keep on going with knockoff, and this time it's a one hit KO. The next Bennett is sent out in vain too right after, as one hit easily takes it out. Dusknoi is a very bulky boy, as he tanks a knockoff pretty well. The second knockoff doesn't KO either, but Dusknoi's damage output is so low that I feel comfortable just hammering it down till it eventually falls. Phoebe now sends out her last Pokemon, Sableye. Fake Out does make Vermilion flinch, and I switch out to Lavender just in case. I go for an Earthquake, but he manages to live on just a sliver of health. Even though he does get fully healed up, he can't keep it up forever and he goes down to just a few more hits. GG Phoebe, only 2 LE4 members left to go. I now go for the second to last Pokemon League leader at the Ice Dojo, Glacia. She leads with Glalie while I send out Fuchsia. Glalie goes for a light screen, which is pretty good here as he resists Fuchsia's flamethrower really well. I send out Cinnaboy here to get in some more powerful hits and set up with Curse. I keep on setting up until I've nearly maxed out my defense and attack and then finish him off with an Earthquake. Now that wall rains up next though, I have to switch out right away. I send out Vermilion, who does a great job at tanking Surf. I go for a fake out just to get some chip damage in, and then send out big guns as I go for wake up slap. I manage to easily tank another Surf, and then finish off wall rain with a couple more wake up slaps and a knockoff. Frostless isn't way too dangerous here, so I go for a knockoff. Vermilion does hit himself in confusion though, so I switch out to Lavender to not take any risks. I go for a rock slide against Frostless, which does some pretty major damage. I then go for a surf to finish the battle off, and even though Lavender is confused, he still manages to knock out Frostlass. Then comes yet another Frostlass, but this ends up freezing Lavender solid, forcing me to switch him out right away. I send out Peter next, and he manages to easily tank a Blizzard pretty well, allowing him to go off for a discharge and finish her off right after. Last but not least is Glacia's Glalie. I send out Fuchsia and go for a flamethrower against Glalie. It does some big damage, and after he protects, it's time for him to go as another flamethrower takes him out. Well played Glacia, we only have one more Elite 4 member left to go. But I do run into a major issue here. I realize I forgot to get the TM for Ice Beam, and I don't have any berries to unfreeze Lavender. Or so I thought. I went into this battle thinking I don't have any Aspear berries, but I completely forgot I had Lumberries just sitting around. Too bad I only realized that halfway through the battle though. Anyways. Let's see if I can actually do this or not with just 5 Pokemon. Here we come, Drake. He leads with Altaria while I go for Fuchsia. I start off by chipping at her health using Hyper Voice, and I then go for a super effective Rock Team to slow her down. I then go for the Takedown with another Hyper Voice. Next up is Flygon, so I go for a Rock Team to slow her down. I think something's wrong with Drake's AI here though, as Flygon literally only goes for Boom Burst, which doesn't work. I don't understand why, but hey. If it leaves my shinies alive, I sure am not complaining. After waking up from rest at full HP, I finally finish her off with a Hyper Vice. Now the next Flygon here wasn't as easy as the previous one. He actually knows how to do some damage, but his special defense is not very good, and just two Hyper Voices takes him out too. Next up, Drake sends out his ace, Salamence. I really don't want to lose Fuchsia here, so I send out Cinnabar. He definitely couldn't handle a Dragon Rush at all, so I switch out to Pewter. Pewter can't do much here either, but his static ability does paralyze Salamence, which is at least something. I then switch to my real tank, Vermilion, to do some heavy lifting. Dragon Rush doesn't hurt him way too much, and as usual, I lead with a fake out. I then go for a knockoff, which really hurts him, and then I switch into Cerulean, and luckily, Salamence goes for a Zen headbutt here, which allows for Cerulean to score the KO with Dragon Claw. This battle is way too close. Last up is Kingdra, whose Ice Beam is extremely dangerous. Although I do get the KO with the Crit Dragon Claw, Cerulean is holding a Yacha Berry, so an Ice Beam wouldn't have been an issue anyways. Now, the time we've all been waiting for, Champion Steven and the very last battle of this shiny only Nuzlocke. Guys, if you appreciate this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me make videos like these to entertain you guys. Without further ado, here we go, the battle we've all been waiting for. Here we go Steven. This time I actually do unfreeze Lavender with a Lumberry, so it'll be a fair fight. Let's see what you can do, Steven. He starts off with Skarmory, so I decide to lead with Pewter. 
It would be a one hit, but Skarmory does land a Toxic due to Sturdy. Steven fully restores after this, but that just slows down Skarmory's demise as a couple more hits does finish the game off for him. Now that Steven sends out his Aggron, I decide to switch out into Lavender. He tanks an Earthquake insanely well, and then would have taken out Aggron in one hit if it wasn't for Sturdy. You really are a beast, Lavender. Cradili is up next, so I switch out to Vermilion due to his typing. He easily tanks a Giga Drain, and then fakes out Cradili. The first Brick Brick doesn't end up being a one-shot, and as I don't want to risk confusion damage, I switch to Fuchsia. Cradili heals up, and for some reason I go for a Flamethrower, which has no damage even as a crit. I then switch back into Vermilion, and nearly finish Cradili off with a Brick Break. One more Brick Break sends her off the face of this earth. Good job, Vermilion. Next up is Claydol, so I decide to switch into Fuchsia due to Claydol's Psychic typing. Claydol sets up Reflect on Light Screen, so I decide to go with Crunch. It really doesn't damage it at all here. Even Hyper Voice barely hurts it. I eventually have nothing left to do, but get rid of one of my precious shinies. It hurts so much to let her go, but at least she served us well. I then send out Lavender, who takes his revenge on Claydol by taking that out in a single surf. Armaldo can try all he wants to, but he just can't handle a single surf either. Now it's time for his all-powerful ace, Mega Metagross. I go for an Earthquake with Lavender, and I'm not able to do anything here as he gets taken out instantly. It hurts to let go of my very first encounter, but it was for the good of the team. You did amazing Lavender, thank you so much. I then switch out to Cinnabar. Metagross has to recharge here, so I go for an Earthquake. It does good damage, but not quite enough to secure the two-shot. For this reason, I set up with Curse, and after tanking Metagross's Giga Impact, I finish this battle off with an Earthquake. We actually managed to get the win with these shinies. That's actually insane, guys. This playthrough was a lot of work, but it was so much fun and so satisfying to see how far these Pokemon came, as I spent so much time obtaining them. Once again, if you do enjoy these kind of videos, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because they take ages to make and the support helps me out a lot. Thank you so much, guys. Peace out.